Ryomen Tsukuna, the king of curses from Jujutsu Kaisen and Kaido of the Beast, the strongest creature from One Piece. When these two formidable foes clash, the question arises, who will emerge victorious? In this video, we'll be analyzing both characters' incredible powers, weapons, and skills against each other. Legend tells of a dark era in the Heian period, where the shadow of a sorcerer casts an ominous gloom over the land. The sorcerer, known as the Disgraced One, was none other than Ryomen Tsukuna. In the golden age of Jujutsu, when brave sorcerers Sorcerers stood as the last line of defense against his malevolence, they face an unrelenting adversary. Despite their valiant efforts, one by one, they succumb to his insidious power, leading a trail of devastation in their wake. According to Gege Akutame, Sukuna is described as less of a sorcerer and more of a walking calamity. Within the story, Sukuna is crafted as a cruel, narcissistic, depraved, and supremely arrogant figure. The impact Sukuna left in history earned him the title of the strongest sorcerer in history, as well as the King of Curse regarded as the strongest cursed spirit in history. His strength is so respected that even Satoru Gojo, the strongest Jujutsu sorcerer in the modern era, known for his confidence, humbly admits that he wasn't entirely sure if he could have beaten him, especially without Megami's Ten Shadows. Sukuna himself possesses immense curse energy. Yuta Kotsuku, a special grade sorcerer known for his boundless pool of curse energy, says that Sukuna possesses at least double, if not more, the amount of curse energy compared to himself. Sukuna utilizes two primary slashing attacks namely cleave and dismantle. The default slash known as dismantle is normally used against inanimate objects. However, its effectiveness extends to cursed spirits and sorcerers, proving to be a formidable technique. In contrast, cleave is a slashing attack that adjusts itself based on the target's toughness and cursed energy level, ensuring a swift and decisive cut. Beyond these techniques, Sukuna possesses an innate ability still cloaked in mystery. This power came to light during the Shibuya arc in his clash with Jogo, revealing Sukuna's capability to create and manipulate flame for long-range attacks by forming an arrow. Sukuna's ultimate move, Malevolent Shrine, ensures a relentless guaranteed hit that slashes through anything in its path, leaving nothing but dust. With a maximum radius of nearly 200 meters, its attack potency reaches a multi-city block level. In addition to his techniques, he can also apply Reverse Curse Technique, which allows the user to instantly heal any injuries, including even regenerating lost limbs within moments. In his Heian era form, Sukuna has four arms and an additional mouth from his torso. So. This gives a greater advantage than the average sorcerer because when chanting incantations, his heart and lungs remain unburdened, boosting his strength and fighting at the same time. In the most recent chapters of the story, he possesses his cursed tool, the Kamatoke, a powerful Vajra-like cursed tool capable of discharging electricity. More than living up to his titles, Sukuna has absolute control over his curse energy. He effortlessly executes his abilities flawlessly and repeatedly, showcasing remarkable proficiency without any issues. In the epic Shinjuku face-off with Satoru Gojo, to decide the ultimate all-time strongest sorcerer, Sukuna one-ups Gojo on numerous occasions with his barrierless domain shattering Gojos from the outside. Sukuna's durability and defense is also one of the highest. In the same battle with Gojo, Satoru strikes Sukuna with a black flash which multiplies the destructive power of a strike by a normal hit to a power of 2.5. Gojo's Black Flash, which is the most powerful punch in the entire series, only knocks Sukuna out temporarily. In terms of speed, even a deep-powered 15-fingered Sukuna demonstrated the ability to keep pace with Maki. This awakened Maki, who effortlessly overcame Curse Naiwa, is acknowledged to achieve speeds up to Mach 3. In terms of high-end scaling, Sukuna has exhibited remarkable speed by reacting to Kashimo's attacks, which are rooted in electromagnetic waves. The nature of these attacks, being a spectrum of light, suggests that Sukuna possesses the capability to evade or counter attacks at speeds equal to or slightly surpassing that of light itself. Beyond his physical skills, Sukuna is an extremely intelligent individual. He is able to quickly understand the inner workings of cursed techniques after only seeing them once or twice and creating suitable countermeasures for them. He did this against Maharaga in their fight and was able to defeat the Shikigami after gaining an understanding of its technique. Speaking of Maharaga, known to be the most uncontrollable Shikigami in the history of the Ten Shadows technique is brought under control by the King of Curses when he takes over Megami's body. Moreover, Sukuna not only manages to tame Maharaga, but also swiftly masters the technique. Sukuna's ability to adapt is second to none. He reveals that he purposely put himself at risk throughout the entire battle against Gojo for Maharaga to adapt to Gojo's infinity entirely, giving Sukuna the ability to slash not only Gojo's infinity, but his space, existence, and the world itself, ultimately leading to Gojo's demise. In the vast One Piece universe, Kaido stands as a mysterious force, showcasing raw power and unwavering determination. Once a Yonko, or one of the four emperors, he held the prestigious title of a top-tier pirate. 
widely known as the strongest creature alive, Kaido's formidable presence extends over 23 feet, dominating both land and sea. With a bounty of over 4,611,000,000 berries, ranking third in the story, Kaido is a merciless warrior seizing every opportunity to gain an advantage in warfare. His insatiable thirst for excitement and chaos propels him to initiate the world's largest war with the goal of forming the ultimate pirate crew exclusively comprised of Devil Fruit users. Instead of resorting to outright killing, Kaido employs methods such as torture and forced labor to shatter the spirits of those who resist him. Guided by the belief that might equals right, he utilizes his unparalleled power to rule through fear and intimidation, making examples of those who dare to defy or rebel against his authority. Covered in menacing tattoos and bearing the scars of numerous battles, those who knows of him have a certain saying, if it's one-on-one, -on -one, always bet on Kaido. Regarding Kaido's abilities, he consumed a mythical Zoan-type devil fruit that allows him to transform into a full serpentine azure dragon and a human-dragon hybrid at will. His full beast form is massive, roughly half the size of a small town, and is covered with extremely durable blue scales, dramatically increasing the tremendous natural durability of Kaido's body. As a dragon, Kaido is capable of creating special clouds called flame clouds. These special clouds serve as both footholds and allows him to move through the air. These clouds can also be used to lift other objects, they are even capable of lifting an entire island out of the sea. His dragon form can also lead to devastating attacks. His blast breaths can easily vaporize mountains and even use other powers such as wind slashes and summon lightning as well. By twisting his massive body, Kaido can create tornadoes which can blow his enemies off the battlefield and into the air. In his human beast hybrid form, Kaido experiences a massive increase to his speed, agility, and overall mobility. This transformation not only enhances his already vast resilience, but also elevates his physical strength to unparalleled levels. In addition, Kaido sets himself as one of the rare individuals in the world capable of wielding all three forms of hockey, these being the abilities to harness one spiritual energy or fighting spirit to enhance various powers and skills. What sets him further apart is his proficiency in the advanced applications of these hockey forms. As an example, Kaido's mastery of advanced observation hockey enables him to foresee events in the near future. This heightened level of perception allows him to sense the presence, strength, and emotions of others even when they are beyond sight or at a considerable distance. The most awe-inspiring form of hockey undoubtedly lies in Conqueror's Hockey. This rare ability empowers the user to impose their own indomitable will on others. This results in victims being mentally overwhelmed by the user, with particularly weak-willed opponents to instantly lose consciousness. Taking Conqueror's Hockey to an advanced level, users like Kaido can infuse their conquering spirit into both weapons and physical strikes, significantly amplifying their impact. Moreover, this heightened mastery allows manipulation of one's aura or presence, disrupting an opponent's ability to sense the user through observation hockey. Kaido, demonstrating his exceptional prowess, releases potent bursts of Conqueror's hockey, capable of damaging the very landscape and sending opponents flying. Even in the absence of his own type Devil Fruit powers, Kaido stands as a legend due to his unmatched physical prowess, earning him the title of the world's strongest creature. With a single-handed swing of his Kanabo, he can effortlessly launch ordinary-sized individuals into the distance and effortlessly shatter the formidable defense of Luffy's Gear 4. Additionally, Kaido's mastery of advanced Conqueror's Hockey enables him to exert pressure on objects, causing significant damage. When two powerful Conqueror Hockey users clash, the sheer force generated is capable of splitting the heavens. While I'm no scientist, the notion of achieving such a force to literally split the sky seems utterly extraordinary and beyond comprehension. Kaido has earned a formidable reputation for being unable to die. Most notably, Kaido jumped 10,000 meters from a sky island to the ground, causing a massive crater and a shockwave strong enough to sink a large ship nearby and emerge with only a small headache. In a fierce battle with Luffy, Kaido demonstrated his resilience by enduring multiple King Kong guns. It's important to highlight that this encounter featured a significantly stronger Luffy compared to his Dressrosa days. As a point of reference, a single King Kong gun's impact was powerful enough to obliterate a significant portion of Dressrosa, showcasing an island-level feat. Kaido not only withstood, but also took multiple hits from an even more potent version of this attack. This resilience speaks volumes about Kaido's extraordinary durability and reinforces the belief in his near invincibility. Despite his massive size, Kaido possesses astonishing speed in combat, effortlessly transitioning from one position to another in the blink of an eye. Even when Luffy used his advanced techniques of forcing the future through observation hockey, Kaido's speed proved overwhelming as he managed to blitz Luffy. It's worth noting that in the past, when Luffy's observation hockey wasn't as developed, he could still dodge attacks 
attack from pacifista units capable of firing beams of light. Back then, Luffy considered these attacks slow. These very pacifista units are confirmed to have beams similar to Kizaru's lasers, and Kizaru, being a being capable of transforming into light, can shoot beams of light. Despite Luffy's post time skip enhancement in observation hockey, allowing him to see seconds ahead, he could invade Kaido's rapid assault. That's a testament to Kaido's exceptional speed. Now that we know who these titans are and what they can do, the question remains, who would win in a fight against the King of Curses Sukuna versus Kaido, King of the Beast? In the context of this hypothetical battle, let's level the playing field by equalizing Haki and Curse Energy. For Sukuna, we will have him in his predicted 20-fingered Heian era form with four arms and two mouths, complete with his dimensional cutting techniques and Kaido at his hybrid form. In the heat of battle, the scene unfolds with Sukuna facing off against Kaido, a colossal figure almost twice the size of Maharaga at an imposing 23 feet. Sukuna, wasting no time, launches into an offensive to gauge Kaido's strength, quickly realizing that the Yonko possesses incredibly tough skin. Employing his default slash dismantle technique, Sukuna soon notices that it fails to penetrate Kaido's formidable exterior. Seizing the opportunity, Kaido retaliates by aggressively attacking Sukuna, tossing him around with raw power. In this moment, Sukuna, keen in his analysis, recognizes the resilience of Kaido's skin and decides to switch tactics. Opting for his cleave attack, Sukuna finds success in cutting through Kaido's defenses, revealing a vulnerability in the seemingly invincible Yonko. Kaido, known for his hubris and welcoming any attacks, comes to the realization that Sukuna's cleave is indeed effective against him. Despite Kaido's renowned durability feats in the One Piece universe, Sukuna's strategy exposes a weakness in the Yonko's defenses, drawing parallels to the legendary Kozuki Odin's ability to pierce Kaido with his swords. In this critical moment, Kaido, recognizing the threat, activates his Conqueror's Haki to fortify his defenses, adding an extra layer of protection against Sukuna's attacks. Additionally, Kaido would use Observation Haki, allowing him to foresee Sukuna's movements and anticipate his actions. If Kaido had the desire to finish off Sukuna right now, he could easily do so. However, given Kaido's tendency to mock his adversaries, Sukuna has the opportunity to seize the moment and initiate his domain expansion, leading to a battle of attrition. Do the malevolent shrine pray. unleashed by Sukuna should, in theory, cleave Kaido into pieces. Moreover, it's crucial to highlight Sukuna's dimensional slashes, capable of slicing through time and space itself. This unique ability would undoubtedly overcome any durability feats that Kaido may possess. However, a significant hurdle rises in this hypothetical hypothetical scenario. While I believe Sukuna could penetrate Kaido's formidable exterior, the underlying assumption is that Sukuna can make physical contact with Kaido in the first place. The issue lies in the potential overwhelming speed and strength of Kaido, which could eventually prove insurmountable for Sukuna. Despite Sukuna's demonstrated quick reflexes and speed, the accumulated feats suggest that Kaido possesses superior speed compared to Sukuna. Additionally, in a clash between Sukuna's Kamatoke and Kaido's Kanabo infused with Haki, the electric discharge would likely have minimal if any, impact on Kaido. Even in a lightning clash between the weapons, while Sukuna may react similarly to his encounter with Kashimo, Kaido's power output far surpasses Sukuna's. Sukuna, at most, reaches a multi-city island tier, whereas Kaido demonstrated the ability to move the entire island of Onigashima while simultaneously engaging all the supernovas in Wano, showcasing impressive striking strength and attack potential at a continental, multi-continental tier. While Sukuna may possess superior battle IQ and intellect entering the conference confrontation, Kaido's overwhelming strength, and more crucially, his speed, are decisive factors in Sukuna's inevitable defeat. Despite Sukuna's potential to employ malevolent shrine and dimensional cutting slashes to overcome Kaido, ultimately, if it's a one-on-one, -on -one, always bet on Kaido. If you want to check out more Cross vs. Battlestyle videos, you're going to want to click right here.